All right, for kids of all ages, Mad Magazine was and is an irreverent indulgence with comedic genius, topical humor, and satire. The writers provide a fresh perspective on the current culture. The magazine shaped, or some might say warped, many young minds. And now a new book shows the magazine's amazing influence. Our Gizwiz and Mad's maddest writer, Dick DiBartolo, takes us inside this zany operation. wearing my mad hat today because I'm talking about a new book called Inside Mad. And I thought, way, Inside Mad, the book, why not talk about it, Inside Mad, the magazine. So here we are, we're Inside Mad. This is a, a famous cover. It's made up of all, I think it was the 400th issue. So Alfred E. Newman is made up of all 400 covers of mad. This is the cover of October Mad Magazine, which came out three weeks before the New York Post did this. William and Gaines was a real character, the original founder of MAD. He didn't have a secretary, he hated to answer letters, he didn't type, so he had 50 rubber stamps made with answers to the 50 most asked questions. And then he would stamp all the answers to your questions on your own letter and mail it back to you. And he said, Dick, it's a great system. And then we're gonna talk to one of the least interesting people who work at MAD, make it happen, John Fercari, the editor, of mad. Dick, always a pleasure, even with that introduction. Uh, oh, you, oh, you heard it. Oh, oh, oh. As you know, we're talking about inside mad. Yes. And so how did that come about? The idea for this book actually came about from my old editing partner, Nick Meglin, back in the 1980s. And that was to ask all the different writers and artists to contribute their favorite article to the book. And the writers and artists really just jumped on it. They wrote some great essays. And then coincidentally, we were looking for a celebrity to write the introduction, which was ultimately written by Judd Apatow, we got a flood of great essays by some great people. Roseanne Barr wrote a wonderful thing about what it was like growing up reading Mad in Salt Lake City and what a lifeline that was to her to culture. I think a lot of people most excited about is this terrific fold-out that Sergio Aragonis, one of our most legendary artists, did. Wow. Where he did all the artists and writers that have ever contributed Oh, wait a minute. Uh, this is me. There you go. In front of a camera. How and, and, and it's Peter, who's actually filming us. <laughs> I, I, Serge doesn't even know Peter, and he put him in there. Okay. Absolutely out right now. Inside Mad, and uh, look for it on Amazon. So there's kind of a backstage look at Mad Magazine. I hope you had some fun, and we're going to throw it back to the studio. So Dick DiBartolo, Mad's Mad is Friday, and the Giz Whiz. I'll be back with Gadget soon. I'm talking to you from Mad. Kind of hard to forget where you are, isn't it? Their 61st anniversary, by the way. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Dick. Here, by the way, is a look at the compilation Inside Mad, and it's just got a little bit of everything. There's that fold out that he was showing you. Of course, it's the first thing that we go to. Um, check it out. The fact that they were able to include every so single cool, right? writer that's ever worked on in a magazine is amazing. I happen to remember Mad TV because I'm from a later oh, generation. Yeah, yeah, of course. But you remember the Well, my sister, my oldest sister always had a copy of Mad and it was just great to read. I loved it. I know. And this, if you could get your hands on it, I'm sure it's a collector's item, but if you can, sold on Amazon, like you heard Dick say, it's just jam-packed with really cool stuff. I'm going to take this home and take a look you at should. it. You should.